I am Dr. Kate Ham, and I'm so excited to be able to share with you more information about dry eye. I feel like today, I just I, we were just chatting that um, I feel like we are in a dry eye kind of um, world today here in the implementation track, talking more about the anterior segment um, and talking about dry eye, but it's such a relevant topic in our community right now. So I am so excited for us to learn more about the dry eye treatment cocktail, patient cases, conversations, and customizations by Dr. Kim Solani. So great to have you here. Go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, that intro. So pleasure to be here. Um, Eyes on 2022, big lead up to uh, the end of the year here and the holidays and just got our Christmas tree in the background. <laughs> so let's jump right into it. Here's some quick disclosures. Uh, this is not a CE. Uh, webinar. So we we'll kind of get into the nitty gritty of what we use and get into brands and all that fun stuff. So what is dry eye? Dry eye is a complex condition that should be properly identified, diagnosed, and treated early in the disease process. At our clinic, and what we usually share with a lot of our colleagues is the goal to improve the uh, consistency, quality, and stability of the tear film by reducing microbial overgrowth, unclogging obstructive oil glands, and managing inflammation. So how do we evaluate all that? These are some of the ways that we go about taking care of our dry consult patients. So standardized dry questionnaire of your choice. We prefer to use the speed two. We also have a lifestyle questionnaire that we'll show you an example of in just a moment. We're big fans of fluorescein and listening staining on almost all of our patients, even if they're coming in for com comprehensive exams. This little lamp evaluation gives you so much valuable information. Just ask the patients to close their eyes, checking for things like ligophthalmus, demodex mites, uh, telentasia of the eyelids. The mybomian gland evaluator gives us a lot of valuable information as well as terms, as far as the function. If you don't have an eva evaluator, just using digital pressure with your hands or a Q-tip works just fine. And of course, we love our uh, Caragraph 5M. You can see in the photo here, it has this wonderful layout where it gives us tear meniscus height, it gives us non-invasive tear breakup time. It gives us a high definition images of the conjunctiva, the lower and upper lids, the ocular surface, as well as really beautiful um, images, infrared images of the mybography component. Here is the dry eye questionnaire that I mentioned. A lot of important, the lifestyle questionnaire specifically. A lot of important components on this list and other things that we may ask for are systemic and ocular disease conditions that are going on with the patient. Um, important to ask about cosmetic use. How are they applying, removing their makeup? What brands of makeup they're using? Oftentimes, makeup brands can have a lot of toxic ingredients in them, such as formaldehyde, parabens, and other ingredients that are not um, safe for the ocular surface or for the eyelids. Uh, asking about computer use in this day and age with COVID, many students as well as professionals are online. So uh, that's going to be a huge impact. And we've seen a large, um, big uptick as far as prevalence and incidence of dry eye patients in our practice. Um, medications can also contribute. At the end of the, the presentation, I'll kind of jump into how statins um, can contribute to dry eye. Contact lens wear, more specifically, if they're overwearing their contacts. We are huge on daily single-use contacts, so we're not reintroducing any Thing that's not sterile into the eye. And asking about family history. We've started doing this more frequently is asking about family history of dry disease or ocular surface disease. And oftentimes patients will say, oh yeah, my mom mentioned they have dry eye. Or we've had some of our older patients who've come in and mentioned that they're having some dryness. Should they have their, their kids sent in, their kids being maybe in their 30s or 40s? Uh, we have actually treated some young pediatric patients as young as 15 years of age with um, some of the office-based treatments, but it can go either way. It can be genetic up the ladder or it can be genetic down the ladder. So that's a great way to also build your dry practice. Um, mybography plays a really big part of patient education. The reason why we love the, the Caregraph 5M or really any of those tools is because you can visualize and connect the dots for patients as far as this is what normal mybomian glands look like. This is where you are, and this is where we want to avoid you going. And if we are seeing some changes that are significant, letting them know that it's concerning to you, just like a dentist would share with their 
uh, patients that the cavity is concerning and it should be taken care of, um, or gum recession is a concern for tooth loss. So we're not only, we're looking at the big picture. You wanna make sure that you're not just diagnosing only one thing and taking care of just that one thing. Very often we have patients who come in who may have papillae for ocular allergies. They have telentasia, so ocular rosacea is going on. They have keratitis. They are not closing their eyelids all the way. So you wanna address all of these components as the best of your ability. So that way the patient can get to relief um, quicker and not just address one at a time. So the primary care doctor, the cardiologist, cardiologist or endocrinologist doesn't just take care of the high blood pressure and forget about the diabetes or the high cholesterol. We wanna look at the patient as a whole. Having educational materials such as posters, videos, infographics, handouts is really huge. These are a few that we uh, were able to obtain from our Oasis rep, so our Oasis Tears rep. The one on the left is fantastic. We have these posters in each of our exam rooms where patients think that dry eye is just dry eye, but watery eyes, tired eyes, red eyes, thighs, light sensitivity, fluctuating vision, these can all be forms of dryness. So um, we let them know that you can have one or more of these. And unfortunately, many of our advanced patients have multitude of these issues going on. And then the image on the right, we don't do plugs that often, especially early on in the treatment plan. But this poster I really love on the right-hand side because it shows the three different, uh, shows us really important anatomical structures, such as the lacrimal gland, the meibomian glands, and also the, the drainage duct there. So um, this is a great educational tool to have in the office. We have videos that play in our waiting area. We also have them on our website. So those are great tools to get patients early exposure to what's, what your practice may entail. And so when they come in, they're a little bit more prepared and they're not caught off guard as far as why are you checking for dry eye? And even though I may not feel it, the patient might say they're not feeling they're having issues, but we might start to see signs. And our goal is to hopefully avoid them from having any of those symptoms um, on that extensive list there. Also, great way to lay it out with patients is that they're not alone. They're not the only ones that have dry eye. They're anywhere from, depending on what resource you're using, they're from about 30 to 50 million patients in the U.S. alone that have dry eye. And I think that's an underestimation. Uh, but you can also let them know there are a lot of celebrity public figures that have come out openly and shared their dry eye journey. So some of the most noteworthy ones are Jennifer Anderson, Ken Jung, who played in Hangovers, Marissa Tomei, Kyle Richards, and Jenny Garth, who um, is shown here in the picture. So most recently, we were lucky enough to have Jenny Garth join our practice and um, treat her with the Optilite. She's a 49-year-old female. Women are more likely, are twice as prone as men to have dry eye. And she had irritation, watery eyes, and was very dependent on drops until we went through her um, Optilite treatments together. So we'll play a little clip of uh, our interaction. Hi, it's a pleasure to meet you. Happy to have you here. So tell me a little about your backstory. Okay, well, I have um, irritated eyes all the time. Like when I wake up, you would think I've slept all night. My eyes should be fresh as a daisy, right? I wake up, my eyes feel dry. They are very sensitive to any kind of air blowing and the air conditioner in the car or a fan in the room or the wind outside and um someone recommended that i check out this optolite and i didn't know anything about it so i found you and i want to hear all about it optolite has been fantastic in our practice as far as getting patients relief so hopefully over the course of the next four sessions you'll start to feel some improvement some patients might feel it within the first visit but uh, oftentimes it'd be about the third or okay i'm so excited Turn it on, make it work. Let's fire this baby up. Do it. Got it. <laughs> um, to start, we're gonna put these pads on your lids. Then we're gonna put some goggles on, followed by a little bit of gel. Oh, it's like an eye patch. So, 
So then we continue on with kind of treating her face. If you're interested, you guys can check that out on YouTube. Uh, nice. she's also really entertaining. She's a much better actri actress and actor than I am. <laughs> Uh, but she was a delight to be around. We've also tried to, you know, really educate the public and the community about dry eye. That's really a big passion of mine is to get the word out. So we were lucky enough to be invited onto the doctor show right before COVID to share some really fun videos on um, my booming gland expression, as well as just get the word out as far as, you know, dry eye is. Some of <laughs> my colleagues will call it an epidemic. But it really is a, a becoming a really uh, significant problem, especially during COVID with screen time and the face masks, the mask associated dry eye. So this is a patient of ours who we hand selected from our own practice, brought on and performed uh, tear care to treat her MG. And she continues to actually have her tear care treatments every six months, kind of on, on the clock. So she's really good about that. So as you're building your dry practice, a few different things to think about. It's not really a, a great way to build a dry practice when you are seeing patients every 15 minutes, unfortunately. Uh, some of these patients really need a lot of hand-holding. So their consults can oftentimes be an hour, two hours, especially if they're doing treatments in the same day. So keep, that's one big thing to keep in mind. These patients oftentimes have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun stuff going on. So we wanna make sure that we're addressing all those concerns. So as you're building your dry practice, Service is really important. Having great advanced imaging and technology can be really powerful as far as demonstrating to the patient that you, you care about this disease process and that you're gonna gather baseline and comparative data. Um, rewarding your dry patients because they're oftentimes cash pay is great with complimentary gifts that we do. Having these great bags that you can see our patients holding on to, our Beverly Hills Optometry pack, uh, branded bags is great as far as kind of a marketing branding, from marketing branding standpoint. Um, as you become more successful with some of your success story, with some of your dry um, outcomes, go ahead and share those with your other patients. Let them know that, you know, many of your uh, patients who've struggled have now found relief. Those who have had debilitating dry eye or lost hope, you're able to bring them back in. Those who were not able to work, you're able to take care of those patients. Uh, those who constantly had to be thinking about their eyes or keeping drops with them, that has resolved. So just being on top of that and then maybe asking them to share their experience as a review online to pay it forward. Social media presence is really huge. Many of our patients have found us through social media. Most recently, one of our patients actually has flown out four times uh, from Chicago to see us for our dry protocol. So um, our passion shows, you want to have fun through the whole process, and these dry eye patients become raving fans. All right, so moving along into the treatment process. So this is kind of a, a great overview uh, from the TFOS to Su treatment summary. We don't adhere to this exactly, but it's a great way, great starting point as far as steps one, two, three, and four. It breaks it down really nicely. Um, you know, regenerizes in step three, for instance here, but we'll oftentimes include that early on if the patient has a lot of keratitis. We had a 79-year-old um, female patient with ocular rosacea, history of glaucoma. Um, she's failed restasis and Zydra. She really does well with steroid drops, of course, but her glaucoma specialist referred her over to us and we don't want her continuing with pharmaceuticals that are gonna be harmful to her. So uh, we jumped right into uh, Blefex because she had some some eyelid issues, keratinization, biofilm, LWE going on. So we wanted to take care of that really well with Blefex. And then we moved on to OptiLite IPL on the same session. So, and coincidentally, he had referred her to us about two, three weeks ago. We were only able to get her in fairly recently. Um, and she developed a sty in the last few days. So um, a Schlesian. Um, so the IPL hopefully will help her with that. And then we started on, on uh, Keflex prophylactically. She doesn't like to be on antibiotics, so she says she prefers to wait a few days, and I said that's completely fine, but if it's worsening, then definitely start that, that course of antibiotics. Um, there are many modern therapeutics that are available, and we oftentimes reach for that holistic approach more so than writing a script, and our patients appreciate that. So um, a lot of our patients are health conscious and thinking about their diets and, and um, 
sleep patterns and wearing technology that tracks their their health. Um, so they, they really enjoy that there is science-based or evidence-based treatments that can help get to the root cause of their problems, such as light therapy, lit exfoli uh, micro blepho exfoliation, um, and advanced thermal expression devices. So here's a brief breakdown of how we incorporate it. We break it down into three steps. Some patients benefit from all three steps. Some will benefit from two out of the three. And these can all be done on the same visit, each column, or they can be broken up into different categories. Um, if they're having things like anterior blepharitis or demodex, of course, your category on the left, your deep cleanings are going to be ideal. We oftentimes reach for blepharitis or zest, depending on the severity of how much, you know, much buildup there is. Uh, we usually go for blepharitis if it's more moderate to severe, and then we go for zest if it's more mild. Or if the patient's really sensitive or they've experienced blood effects and it's very ticklish, then we'll know to pivot to zest. If they're having obstructive MGD, clogged oil glands, we like the advanced thermal expressions. The top three are our favorites, um, Lipoflow, Ilux, and Tear Care. And then, um, of course, for patients who have ocular rosacea and MGD, IPL or OptiLite really does a great job as far as helping these patients out. And it's become our foundational treatment. Oftentimes we'll, if the patients are more severe, we will do the treatment cocktail of all three categories in the same day. If they're more moderate, we might start with an OptiLite and a Blefex, and then incorporate heat midway in their, op, in their OptiLite series, because they oftentimes need four sessions about a month apart. Um, we can sometimes make that two weeks apart or six weeks for a patient who's moving to Singapore at the end of the year, and we only started seeing her in November, so she wanted to run through her series of four sessions before she leaves permanently. Um, so we're gonna be spacing those out about a week or two apart, and um, that's completely safe to do. If the patient's also mild, then we'll do maybe their OptiLite, and then we'll reevaluate. We do expression after every OptiLite treatment just to assess what their gland, gland function is, but also it's a little bit of treatment, if you will, because we get some flash heat from the OptiLite. Um, here's some fun videos of expression in action. Patients really love those types of videos. Um, if you had, that was with, I believe that was with an iPhone adapter, but we have some updated videos where it's with the Firefly slit lamp. And that has been incredible. Uh, we're able to do the expression comfortably, binocularly through the scope, and then be able to show them immediately afterwards. And it's really oddly satisfying for me and constantly impressed by how patients love seeing these and having them emailed to them, um, which is also going back to the practice building component. So when you can visualize it and be able to show it to patients, they get excited, it's the eyelid pimple popping stuff. Um, there's also, you know, a little bit of a controversy as far as if glands are gone, if we can bring them back and whether that's proper regrowth or if it's improved visualization with gland structures. Um, we can see a before and after of a patient with Opulite, but there's some early evidence. I wrote an article about this a little while back um, for in review of optometry, as far as the controversy of regeneration of glands. Optilite has some great background there. Regenerize the um, placenta base drops us. Lipid flow had some work on it done as well. And uh, my bone gland or mask and probing. So this patient, uh, we can see where the arrow is pointed, where the gland visualization or possible regrowth is happening. So uh, she's was extremely thrilled by the outcome and still continues to have her treatments and maintenance treatments done uh, very regularly. Um, shifting gears from office space to home route regimen. You know, we've been doing this for um, just shy of a decade, about eight years or so. But our home regimen and our, our modality, our recommendations and clinical tips for patients, you know, things to do at home, continues to evolve and change over time. Uh, most recently, Halonite became available in the States. Previously, it was available on Amazon. And our patients love this nighttime ointment, especially those patients, if you ask them, what time of day is your dry eye the worst? Uh, 
uh, if they're mentioning I'm waking up in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning, or if you're evaluating them upon, uh, you know, when you're examining their eyelids and then they're not closing mechanically on their own and they have lagophthalmus, the hyalinide vitamin A ointment is fantastic. Um, the two supplements of choice that we reach for currently are the PRN, DE3, and Hydri. Those have been fantastic. The PRN is great because of its, we're always looking at the, uh, the form of omega-3, the ratio of EPA to DHA, and also the quantity. So those three components are very important. And the EPA plays a big part in the building blocks of your, uh, your mybum. So we want to make sure patients are have a, having a high, high quantity of EPA in their diet. And the omegas are really great for post-workout, just general inflammation in the body, uh, for patients who have cholesterol issues, um, cognitive health, and all that fun stuff. We do also have warm compresses and goggles for patients who may be more mild to moderate, will do great, with warm, should do well with warm compresses, warm moist heat. We have the OcuSci, Bruder works fine. Um, there are a few others as well. I think OcuSoft and iEcho have one as well. And then Tranquilize is great for those more moderate to advanced patients, the moisture chamber goggles. Autologous serum drops from Vital Tears, patients may request or you may want to reach for. Um, if you have somebody in your area who's doing PRP drops, PRP actually is a little bit better than autologous serum drops. And there's a great article um, that breaks down the differences between PRP and autologous serum drops. They're both blood drops, but it's how um, there's a slight difference between the two in terms of when the coagulation happens. And the PRP has less inflammatory, uh, has more anti-inflammatory and less in pro-inflammatory mediators. Um, especially for patients, you want to be careful to do AST, AST drops, autologous serum tear drops um, for patients who have autoimmune condition. Um, devices, the eye tear has been a great addition to our practice. It's a neurostimulation device that I wish I had, um, I brought home from the office, but we've all heard of Tiravaya, that's this neurostimulation with the chemical intranasally. Uh, this one's done externally, activates the external nasal nerve and produces all three layers of the tear film and actually activates mybum expression from the glands, which is really fantastic. There's some really great studies, um, promising studies on that. So I prefer the more holistic I tier 100 over the tier via. And patients have come in asking about tier via and we actually start them on the I tier, we're able to demonstrate it in the office and then they proceed with that. Newlids is also fantastic for those patients who come in, you do, uh, advanced heating, you express them, you know, after visit after visit, and they're still really clogged. The new lids is fantastic as far as continuing to clear away the, the bad oils that are exiting the poor mybum, as well as helping with any anterior uh, blepharitis. The patients are really prone, prone to build up on their lash line. Um, our preservative-free tiers of choice are Oasis, Retain, and Opta Optase. Uh, very rarely, some patients may not do well with these. We also really love Sustain Hydration PF. Uh, for lid hygiene, our go-tos are the Avanova Optase Wipes. I also really like the Zaku Shield Gel. That works really beautifully. And as I mentioned earlier, cleaner cosmetic brands are fantastic. Um, our go-to is Eyes of the Story. And then blood workup. That's something that we didn't address early on, and I really recommend this for my colleagues is, and you don't have to order these tests if you don't feel comfortable, you can just have this email to your patient or the list given and they can ask their primary care to run some of these tests. Inflammatory markers, um, lipid panel, vitamin deficiencies and omega levels. Um, a really great article came out recently for patients who are on statins um, or patients who have lipid abnormality. That's why we have lipid panel on there. And those can be risk factors for dry eye patients. So. Um, your patients who are on medications, you can really highlight these components and, and make a difference for them. You, we don't want to stop any medications. We don't want to intervene on that, but we want to be able to educate them and, and get ahead and know what are contributing factors. So as we're trying to fill the bucket to make them feel better, we want to know if there's any holes that are slowing down our progress or uh, impacting our outcomes. So something that I really love to share is you know, one of the quotes that I oftentimes say is new imaging technology. Uh, technology is a very valuable tool, not only for disease assessment, but also patient education. The ability to property, properly guide the exam journey from a diagnostic testing 
the treatment plan is imperative for optimal outcome and patient satisfaction. So taking care of these patients by properly identifying, diagnosing, and treating them and going through your treatment cocktail um, really can make a huge difference for their quality of life. And oftentimes many of these patients who are more advanced may have a, uh, it's, a, it's impacted, negatively impacted their, their activities of daily life. So when you're able to give them back the power and give them back the hope, it really goes a long way. And so um, here's a, a really great patient that we wrote her case. Uh, this is a great article, Lost Hope Found with a Change in Care, where the patient was a um, 60 year old fe older female lady. Her daughter had found us. Her daughter was in New York. Our patient was here in LA. Her daughter had called the office saying, I want to send my mom in for lipoflow. flow. After she presented, we noticed that she actually had ocular rosacea as well as obstructive. She kind of had the trifecta. Um, she had clogged glands, the MGD, she had the uh, ocular rosacea, and she had the blepharitis. So she entered with speed score of 24 out of 28. Her tear osmolarity was a 335 and 338. So it's about moderate abnormal, moderately abnormal. After six weeks of after six weeks and only one session of LFX, one lipoflow and one OptiLite, her score had already improved pretty significantly from 24 to 18. Her tear osmolarity score was, was way more dramatic of an increase in that short period of time, where it went down from 335 to about 304. Um, after 16 weeks or about four months, and that was including two additional OptiLites, it usually would have been a little bit closer to her optolytes, but she ran into some health issues. Unfortunately, she has brain cancer and uh, other systemic issues that she's dealing with. So the important thing is she did come back. She did two more optolytes, and incredibly, her score went from an initial 24 out of 28 down to a zero out of 28. She's absolutely thrilled. She ended up doing her fourth session about a month later, and she just came in recently for her three-month maintenance and she's still doing incredibly well. So let's jump into some fun cases. So um, this patient had LASIK in both eyes about 16 years ago, thought that he could be on Opcon A drops for his dryness and redness. We quickly noticed that his glands were clogged and um, initiated lipoflow same day. And he's doing, he did great right afterwards when we saw him for his six to eight week follow-up post lipoflow. Um, here's another one of our patients who wasn't very symptomatic, but on his mybography, it's a little small there, but you can see in the upper left-hand corner, his mybography was uh, moderately changed, approaching severe, and he um, has moderate non-invasive tear breakup time, so he has moderate tear instability. He wears, he's highly myopic, so and he, is a sig he has astigmatism, so he wears his contact lenses almost all day, so that almost acts like a Band-Aid where he doesn't really feel his dryness. Um, but after we did the treatment, he established a new baseline and he felt a lot better. I believe we have a little um, interview with him. How's your experience? It's pretty easy. I listened to a podcast and felt a little bit of pressure. How's the eat? You just fine. It's fucking good actually. Yeah. Can you pull some of the things? Pulse in the back was like someone literally massaging my <laughs> Yeah, so the great thing is that we do have the Lipoflow, Tear Care, and ILUC, so we kind of handpick which patients are going to do well with each. We stay away from Lipoflow if the patient's keratoconic or has really small fissure sizes or is claustrophobic. Um, we enjoy ILUX as a great alternative for customization. If certain glands are more clogged than others, we can really spend more time with the simultaneous heating and expressing. And tear care is a great introduction for those patients who are afraid of things inside their eye. Um, they get to kind of sit back and relax for 15 minutes. But uh, this patient here did really well with his uh, lip flow session. And you can see the before and after. So his tear stability improved significantly from, let's see, that was about two months apart for that follow up, but he was extremely thrilled with the outcomes. And uh, during, we, also, we always want to make sure that the patients have a nice outcome afterwards and also make it a pleasant experience during the whole process. So as he mentioned, he did really great 
during that um, time period. Some of these patients may not do as well during some of these treatments, so it's really great to coach them through the process. And uh, our, our doctors are the ones who treat the patients, whether it's Lefex, IPL, Lipoflow, um, so that way patients really feel comfortable knowing that the doctor is involved through the whole, the whole, uh, the whole process. Um, here's one of our lovely Optilite or IPL patients um, who were able to get, she wanted to have surgery, she was a dancer, um, she was concerned to have surgery and actually surgeons would kind of turned her down. And um, after a number of failures of um, things that she was doing at home, we were able to successfully get her to a place where she was comfortable and had smile um, refractive surgery successfully. And so she's out of contact lenses. And that was important for her because as an active individual and with contact lens intolerance, she could only wear them for a few hours at a time. She, uh, she was extremely thrilled. And here's her experience with um, IPL. This was with the Optolite's predecessor, the M22. But the uh, same OPT technology internally, and many of the studies on Optolite were done with this device that we still have and love. I came to get IPL because I had really dry eyes that were itchy and irritating me, and I found that I tried a lot of different things, and IPL has been the only one that's made a difference, at least that I perceive. I've noticed that getting IPL treatments regularly helps my eyes feel less itchy and generally red and irritated. Um, so a cool gel will be applied to your, your face should be clean and a gel will be put all around your face and kind of right by your eyes. And then the procedure itself feels sort of like little teams. It's not at all painful. It's more sort of surprising when, when it's happening, but I wouldn't say anything is, it's nothing to be scared of. It's nothing that's going to hurt. It's just unusual because you're not used to having things directly on your eyelid. So there's two main ways that we do the, uh, the Optilite or the IPL is one with um, pads, the other way is with contact lenses, uh, corneal shields in place, like big contact lenses, little lenses that are not see-through. And patients um, oftentimes do really well with that, especially if they have chalazines. Here's another uh, gentleman who came in experiencing dry eye within four sessions. This was one of our patients that uh, had Ibiflow, um, or we call it the eye massage done. After four sessions, his speed score had dropped significantly from 15 to six, and his initial symptoms were irritation, itchiness, and poor body sensation. So he was really thrilled with that whole process. The Ibiflow treatment over a series of four sessions, uh, I noticed an extreme difference before I came in until now. My right eye was much drier than my left, and now I barely notice it. Um, I've been doing the hot compresses in the evening, uh, maybe more religiously starting the second or third session of my flow. And I highly recommend it to anybody that's having dry eye symptoms. It is a game changer for sure. So we've inherited patients from other offices who've had my flow. Um, maybe if they moved into town or for other reasons. And I really recommend, we've had patients say that, oh, they had Mibaflow with the technician and they didn't do expression, the doctor wasn't in. For any of these treatments that we perform, most notably IPL or the advanced thermal devices, expression is really key. Uh, we're, we're melting the oils, we wanna, we wanna extract them, we wanna get them out so they're not continuing to cause stress on the structures, on the oil gland structures. So, Give these, let's give these patients relief and um, express them uh, as often as we can and, and as comfortably as we can. So I'm also a dry patient. I have been for 20 years. That's why I'm so passionate about the disease and the whole process um, and really enjoy giving these patients hope and relief. Um, I've had I have a history of keratoconus. I have uh, my bone gland disease. I have eye allergies, Crohn's, so autoimmune. And most recently I had uh, kidney failure right before COVID. And I was lucky enough to be a match with my wife and she donated her kidney um, literally two weeks before COVID hit. So and I'm doing really well, very happy about that. It was really sad to be away from patients for about six months, um, but I'm glad to be back doing well and, and helping a lot of these patients out. So I continue 
early on before a lot of these devices were available, I was a patient, so I can commiserate with some of these, these folks who come in and they're in really bad shape. Um, I was on restasis, I was on steroid drops, but I wanted something, something that was gonna get to the root cause of the problem. And so 10 years ago, I was fortunate enough to have Blefex performed at one of the conferences by Dr. Reinerson himself, who had invented Blefex. Um, even though I'm keratoconic, Lipiflow is not a good option, but I wanted to experience what it felt like and I consented to it. Um, wasn't very comfortable, I will say. Uh, my, my cone, my Ks are about 50 or so, low 50s, um, so I don't recommend that, but I really did enjoy um, tear care and Ilux. Those are great. Ibuflow also feels really good too, but um, let's see. And I continue to have maintenance IPLs. I don't think that was updated on there. Um, I try to have them about every month or two if possible. Let's see, this patient um, presented with anterior blepharitis, biofilm, bacterial overgrowth, crusting, and a lot of makeup buildup. So we let patients know, you know, all the tips and tricks on, you know, how to apply makeup, avoid the waterline, which makeup brands are more desirable than others, what ingredients to avoid. And then we carry a lot of these products in office for patients for convenience reasons, but also it's great, um, as a revenue driver for the practice. Um, so patients appreciate it that they don't have to go running around finding these products. And then when they come back for their follow-up treatments, if they're running low and they wanna support the practice, they can continue to pick up those products from um, our office. So we're performing zest on this patient um, and very easy, gentle procedure. It's by Zocular and uh, Dr. Peter Pham, who's an ophthalmologist is the the inventor of this. The main cleansing ingredient is okra base, which is a natural anti-inflammatory and antibacterial, and oftentimes very gentle for patients to use in the office. There's also a formula that patients can uh, pick up and use at home as well. Uh, we also use amniotic me membranes. We've used early on um, in our dry practice, we use the dehydrated membranes and they worked okay, but I really noticed that the cryopreserved work a lot better. Um, I was hoping the dehydrated ones worked as well as the cryo because they're significantly less in cost to the practice, but the Procara really is worth, um, worth the investment. And our goal here is to, to offer the best to our patients. And um, we've since only used cryopreserved for maybe the last three years, four, three or four years or so. Um, here's a great patient before and after three days of Procara. So, this patient, um, she ate up <laughs> the, the Procara, the amniotic membrane portion within about three days. When she came back, the ring was there and there was no sign of the, the membrane. So she, uh, she just sucked it all in. And let's see, oh, here's a great before and after. A lot of these patients who come in and we're able to image with the firefly slit lamp, we're able to image their, their blepharitis, especially in this case, the collarettes that you can see. Um, indicative of Demodex. And um, literally immediately afterwards, we can show them the images. And we had a patient yesterday who was in her mid thirties and she wanted to see them before and after. So visualizing it and having these tools where you can, whether it's high tech like Firefly or um, a slip lamp adapter with your, you know, your iPhone, so go for it. Also send these patients home. It's important, we let them know that the home regimen is not a replacement of the office space. They work synergistically, just like the brushing of the teeth doesn't replace the dentist and vice versa. Um, they work in, in combination with one another. So here's a 69 year old female. You can see the, the ocular rosacea kind of yells at you, jumps out at you. Um, in that image, the high definition image of her eyelids and ocular surface. We um, can see the reduced tear uh, breakup time or the uh, tear film instability on the image on the bottom right. Um, and then we treated her with the Procara, with uh, thermal pulsation, as well as with IPL. And she's been seeing us for a few years now and doing a lot better. She was referred by uh, one of our local refractive surgeons. So, Having referrals from colleagues in the area, whether they're up, to, we're very honored and um, and uh, it's a pleasure to take care of some of our MD and OD colleagues who refer their patients to us. We started our practice without an optical 
My family has been in the optical industry for about six decades and they handle that side, but I really don't have much overlap there. Um, so our dry practice, Advanced Dry Center doesn't have any optical. So um, we let our patients who are referred in know that they're coming in for the dry treatments and they are welcome to head back to their great um, OD or MD for their primary eye care. Um, or we'll take these patients, we'll prep them and then we'll clear them for surgery. So let's see, this is a 37 year old female with a history of LASIK about 11 years ago. Um, she had fluctuating vision and her entering speed score was quite low, um, but you don't just look at the score. We wanna look at what the values are. So her main symptom, she didn't have anything else but burning, which was sometimes, and severity was uncomfortable. So even though the score is low, you still wanna look at the details uh, and break it down as far as how often are they experiencing that symptom and how severe is it? So this patient was not experiencing tearing, was not experiencing grittiness or eye fatigue, but she did have the, the burning component. And then when we did mybography, we can see that her glands were severely affected um, on, on both lower lids. Thankfully, she had, she had nice structure on her upper lids. And so our goal was to help preserve the upper lids and um, uh, you know, there's not much on the lower lids, unfortunately, but to keep taking care of, uh, you know, anatomical preservation is huge, especially when they have the upper lids. So oftentimes imaging just the lower lids is not sufficient. You wanna to try to avert the upper lids and check what's going on underneath the, those guys. Okay, so um, for home regimen, we put it on uh, omega-3 supplements lid hygiene, compresses, artificial tears. And uh, in the office, we performed IPL, thermal pulsation, liver flow, and then um, one of the lid exfoliations. I can't recall if it was WFX or Zest. But the big takeaway with that is um, to image both upper and lower lids if you have a mybographer. We, at the Firefly, we opted to have that with mybography. We have the keratograph that has mybography. And we have an autorefractor, believe it or not, that has just mybography. So there's a lot of options out there. Uh, Tim Trent is a good friend, also has my box, which is uh, an, kind of like a adapter on your, a mybography adapter onto your slit lamp. So it's very portable, especially if you have small real estate. Um, we have a lot of these tools in our office that only has about 900 square feet. So we, we really make it work. Um, this is our doctor, uh, the doctor show patient. So she is an avid contact lens wearer. She wears makeup. She has beautiful looking glands uh, for the most part, much better looking glands uh, than when we first started her dry eye treatments. And she continues to do every six months, as you can see. So the doctor show was January, 2020. She came back into our office um, in July, about six months later. And we saw her two more times. Um, so she's done a total of four rounds of her uh, tear cares. And then we just scheduled her to come back in January of 2022 for her next one. So she's very good about her compliance with her home regimen, but also really good about seeing us just to kind of stay ahead of things. Just like dentists will recommend patients to come in every six months for their dental cleanings. My hope is that this becomes something that's, uh, that's done on a regular basis for a lot of our patients prophylactically. Just some bonus cases. Um, we had a 25-year-old male with chronic chalazians who had a history of Kenalog injections into his eyelid who didn't really want to keep having that method. Um, and there was talk about having excisions on. So we just completed his fourth, yes, his fourth Optilite uh, with corneal shields yesterday. And he's doing tremendously better. And he was the one who initiated the, hey, can I continue to come back, doc, for my maintenance sessions? I want to come back as quickly as maybe a month or two from now. And I said, absolutely, just to stay ahead of things. Um, the 79-year-old female patient I mentioned earlier with the advanced glaucoma and severe ocular rosacea um, just came in very recently. So we'll see how she does. Um, our youngest Optilite patient was a 15-year-old male with nuanced eclasin, and it resolved within two sessions. Um, so a lot of these kids nowadays, they're on screens. So dryness is becoming an avid issue. And one of the symptoms of dryness is clogged oil glands that lead to 
Sighs, Bordeolones, and Orchilasians. Um, and then the young lady pictured to the right, 30-year-old female with MGD inocular rosacea. She had been put on a series of steroid drops. She was driving from Death Valley to see us. And then she recently has relocated uh, a little bit closer, but still drives uh, many hours round trip to get to us. Um, and that's not uncommon. So our goal is to get a lot more colleagues on board to help these patients, but I know it can be a struggle and that's why we're here to really impact these patients who um, are struggling. So here are some articles that I've been able to contribute to, whether it's review of optometry a few times, modern optometry with that patient who we restored hope, um, optometric management, talking about Regenerize, the differences between light and pro and the benefits, the doctor show with dry eye MGD and tear care, and um, Fox News, NBC as well. So try to, you know, get to your local media outlets and let them know that that's something that you do, uh, regardless of what part of the country you're in or if you're international. Um, you can start very easily with YouTube um, and social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and then you can kind of escalate to some of these other platforms or media outlets as well. So just continue to get the word out there. Dry eye and ocular surface disease is, uh, it is an issue that's not really going to go away. It's only going to become more rampant. So there are going to be more devices on the diagnostic side and the therapeutic side to come. And um, it can get a little bit tricky as far as where to start. But the main thing is just, you know, just to hit the ground running. And whether it's doing things that are low tech or high tech, uh, just help, let's help these patients out. So there's our OptiLite. So we actually have both. We kept, we held on to the OptiLite and then we have our M22. Um, so we treat a lot of patients. Um, the OptiLite has a new hand piece that a lot of our patients love, especially when we're treating onto their eyelids. It's really gentle. And um, with that, this is how you can reach us. Um, you can feel free to email. Um, I try to be pretty responsive to our patients. Our, we kind of have that boutique concierge practice where we try to help colleagues as well as, um, as patients. We had a ophthalmologist recently from one of the big academic, academic schools um, from in San Diego visit our practice, kind of learn our protocol. So we're always open to that. If you want to talk to your reps and um, hop on a call or to kind of come in and do a, a shadowing day or one-on-one, -on -one, um, we'd, love to, we'd love to host you. And I think that's it. Awesome. I learned so much about ways that I can treat dry eye with my patients and people can treat dry eye all over the country. Um, there was a question from the audience and kind of in the chat that was curious about when you do co warm compresses, are you looking more for a moist or like a wet warm compress or more of a dry warm compress? Yeah, ideally we'll reach for the warm moist heat, um, but really it's just a matter of does the patient get relief, even if it's the plugins. Um, some patients don't have a microwave or don't want to use an oven. They like the convenience of having something that plugs in that's close by their, their computer. There's another one I believe called Tear Restore, which is almost like a superhero mask where it heats around. You can see through the center. So that's another option. It's a little bit, a little bit pricier. Um, and of course, Tranquilize is another fantastic option for your more moderate to advanced patients. Awesome. Um, I, I know we just have kind of a couple more seconds here. So I wanted to give two um, of our raffle codes out. The first one is Novartis and the second one is Sequa. So Sequa is C-E-Q-U-A. So that one is a little bit different than a Novartis, um, which I know a lot of us know. So Sequa, C-E-Q-U-A is the second quote, is the second one. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing so much with us. As we're wrapping up our day, um, if anybody is looking for a bottle of wine, um, I'm super excited. Eyes on Eye Care shared with us um, a bottle of Jessup Wines, the official wine of Eyes on Eye Care. Um, my little brother is a sommelier. Um, and so I shared with him that um, I got a new bottle of wine and we are super excited um, to try it out together. So I'm going to break this bad boys open to celebrate um, Saturday of Aizen 2022 being completed.
If you have a moment, go ahead and check out our exhibit hall as well. We have an awesome double platinum sponsor, Johnson & Johnson. They are here for optometry and ophthalmology. So you can kind of toggle between the two for Johnson & Johnson. And I think it's just a really cool opportunity to see what other eye care providers and eye surgeons are doing um, in our community. So it's going to be an awesome experience. Don't forget to tune back in tomorrow. Um, if you are coming tomorrow to take CE and have not taken the pre-test for the CE component, you do need to take the test only once before you take your first CE course. Then afterwards, after the, at the end of the conclusion of the day, um, tomorrow, Sunday, December 5th, there will be a post-test just for us to be able to see how much you learned and you do need to have a 75% or greater passing score to receive CE credit from that one. Um, I am so excited and thank you all so much for being with me today on the implementation track. Uh, I have learned a ton about the interior, seg interior segment and dry eye today. Again, I am Dr. Kate Ham. If you want to follow along on my optometry journey, you can always follow me on Dr. Instaham on Instagram. Um, but I'd love to get to know all of you at some point and continue to look at Eyes on Eye Care and Eyes on 2022 for some really great content. Thank you so much. Let's break over this bottle of wine. Have a great rest of your day.